All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live on the air with the one, the only member of the Wu Tang Worldwide DJ Coalition. We got DJ Iceman right here, right now, live on the line. How are you doing this evening? I'm okay, Moto. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. I hope everything is all well with you so far in 2020, 21. You know, we're not we're not too too far in the year, but hopefully, she's treating you well. And same to you. First off, I want to thank you for having me on this platform. It's an honor and a privilege. You know, uh, you really didn't have to rock with me, but the fact you are, I'm, I'm very appreciative. So thank you for that. And congratulations on your first uh, awards uh, uh, broadcast show ceremony, however you want to call it. I heard it went off really well. And, um, you know, once again, congrats on that. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It went pretty well. I'm not going to lie. It was my first time, so I accidentally clicked the wrong button a few times and announced a winner too soon. But other than that, you know, <laughs> that happened twice, but, you know, at least it didn't happen every single category. So that's a blessing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, first time out, you know, you have those little growing pains. Next year it'll be better, so... Hey, man, most definitely, but I got to ask you, uh, DJ Ice, man, because I got to say, well, well, me and my team were doing uh, the research for this interview, man. Like, I-, I found out some stuff about you that I didn't even know, so I'm actually really intrigued to get into it. But first and foremost, I have to ask you, like, what actually made you get into the music industry initially? Because I got to say, you're a phenomenal producer and most definitely a phenomenal DJ at that. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I first started DJing at the age of nine following my uncle around my uncle was a dj back home in brooklyn and for about two years or so i was i was asking him to teach me how to dj and finally on my ninth birthday exactly he had got a whole new dj setup so he gave me his old dj setup and you know gave me the, the turntables mixers speakers and a couple of records and just started teaching me and i actually he had me actually practicing for about a whole year before i actually went out and did something so you know, that's basically how it started, you know what I'm saying? And then, of course, being from New York, you know, um, I was born in 73, so I was born basically around the same time as hip-hop. So it just it just became everything. It became the lifestyle of, you know, where I was living. So I got to see a lot of wonderful things and, you know, got to uh, progress. And also as well, the one thing I noticed is that you are, you, are actually, you actually have a medal uh, from the uh, you have sorry you have a master at arms U.S. Navy medal. I was wondering what actually made you transition actually into the U.S. Navy, and of course, what was that experience like earning that uh, earning that medal within the Navy? Man? Because that's phenomenal. Yeah, actually, what it is, it's um the thing you see is it's called a challenge coin, and what it is is that you know um it's not in the military. We all get one, you know, different commands, different stations, whatever. And it's, it's, it's a bit of fun uh, folklore. So basically, if you have your challenge coin and you go out to a bar with a bunch of your buddies, all right, somebody would take the coin and slam it on the table. And everybody would take off their, their challenge coins and put it on the table. Now, whoever does not have their challenge coin are buying the drinks for the night. And if everybody does, and the person who initiated the challenge has to buy the drinks. <laughs> Well, at the end of the at the, at the end of the night, man, it sounds like y'all ha- y'all are all having a good time, and you all are going to get fucked up. Yeah, and you know it, it, it's transitioned to you know a more of a, a a ceremonial thing. There's people that collect them. I have a, a pretty decent collection myself, and it, it just be, it just carried over into other aspects of life. So now you see challenge coins for EMTs and police and fire, and you know uh, doc, you know. It, it, it just blew up. But as far as me uh, joining the Navy, it's, it's kind of weird because um, I, I, I came from, you know, basically a, a broken household. You know, my mother had uh, addiction issues and things like that. And I was fostered uh, back and forth, you know, between foster homes and group homes and things of that nature. And, um, you know, I just grew up in a, in a real bad time in a real bad neighborhood. And, you know, it, it got to the point where I had to join the military basically just to get out. <laughs> you know, I joined, it, was a, it was a vacation from the hood, so to speak. So, And I'm going to be honest, man, I, I feel you exactly where you're coming from. I grew up in foster homes and group homes as well. So if I had that military card on, on the table to get to get out of that group home, best believe I'd be like, yo, sign me up, Colonel. <laughs> I'd be like, get me the fuck out of here. Yeah. So I completely understand all yeah. that. 
But another thing, uh, aside from your music that I noticed you did, which I'm really intrigued about, is that I also read that uh, want, that you were actually an MMA fighter at one point. I was wondering, can you tell us a bit more about that and what, decide, what made you decide to get into MMA? Well, I've, I've always been a fan. You know, me and my friends used to watch the, the first UFC tapes that came out around 97 or so. So I've always been a fan of the sport. And of course, you know, I never really had any formal training except what I had on various jobs and, you know, in the military and stuff like that. But I was living in Roswell, New Mexico at the time. And my cousin, he was a fighter. And he came to town and asked me if I wanted to work his corner. So I was like, yeah, okay, you know, I get to get into fights for free and stuff like that. And a friend of mine at the time who I DJed with ran a, um, uh, a fight dojo. And one of his guy's opponents had dropped out. And so he's like, hey, Ice, I know you like to, you know, mix it up every now and again. Do you want to, you know, go ahead and fight him? And at first I was like, I don't do this. You know, <laughs> this isn't for me. And he explained it. He was like, listen, you get to go in this cage, you get to punch somebody in the face. You don't have to worry about going to jail and you get paid for it. So <laughs> I was at the point where, you know, I really don't have anything to lose. So I, I ran to Walmart, got a little uh, boil and bite mouthpiece. And my cousin gave me some gear and I got in there. And um, I basically got trashed. Uh, <laughs> I got beat up. But uh, the guy who wanted to become my trainer, I guess he saw something in me. He was like, listen, you did pretty good for your first time out. No training. Come with me. Train with me for you know six months or so. We'll get you another fight. If you like it, continue. If not, walk away. No hard feelings. And, you know, that's just how it started. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, 21 fights and four titles later, I wound up retiring. Because, mind you, that I'm 31 at the time of my first fight. And this was a professional fight. You know, I got paid. This was not an amateur fight. So 31 is basically the age where most guys retire. <laughs> and here I am starting. <laughs> and I got to say, though, Ice Man, just, just truthfully, man, nothing, no first fight can be worse than what CM Punk, the CM Punk's first fight. I don't know if you happen to see that, but I think it was like... I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds bad, man. He, I've he seen, should I've have seen, stayed in WWE, man. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I've, I've seen some worse ones, but yeah, for for as much as, as, as CM Punk was doing and talking and all that, he definitely could have had a better outing. Oh, man, that that guy actually smacked him so hard that CM Punk landed literally, and not through the announce table, but at the announce <laughs> table. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a crazy one. But yeah, that's that's basically how I how I got into it. And mind you, you know, say even through the military, through my MMA career, through all my jobs and stuff, I was still DJing. You know, it was part time and stuff like that. It wasn't until after I retired from MMA, you know, um, I really started taking the DJing thing seriously as far as career wise, going, you know, doing gigs, promoting, and and stuff like that. So. And one thing I got to ask, man, out of those four titles you won, like, uh, w w how did it feel? Does, how does it feel just knowing that, you know, you, you being a DJ in the music industry, a jack of all trades, how does it feel just being a four-time MMA champion, man? Because that's actually astonishing. Yeah, it, it's, it feels good. You know, it, it, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I, get, to, I get to show the grandkids and, and things like that. Like, a lot of my friends and, and family used to get on me a lot because – I was, I wouldn't say I was an adrenaline junkie, but I was always looking for the next challenge. And that's only because everything that I basically ever wanted to do in life, I did before I was 21. You know, I wanted to graduate high school. I graduated high school. I graduated college. I joined the Navy and I saw the world at 18. You know, the only thing that I did past 21 was have my first child. I had my first child at 26. So it was like, you know, what else can I do in, in life? You know, so I was just always trying to find another challenge and you know mma just happened to be one of them and also as well back to your music side of things you were also a member of the northwest based producer collective by the name of filthy fingers united i was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about the filthy fingers united for the individuals they don't already know and of course how did joining that collective come to be for you um, I'm, I'm, I'm still a part of FFU, you know, um, these guys are just some phenomenal, phenomenal producers, you know, a lot of them are based out here in the Northwest, but they are members, you know, as, as far as Brazil, and, you know, we, we get together, and it used to be monthly, it kind of switched to like, uh, quarterly, 
they, you know, we put out, you know, music, beat tapes and stuff like that. It's always on Bandcamp, and we have our own site, ffu.com. Uh, but yeah, man, these guys are like really phenomenal, really creative, and they, you know, always have good words of encouragement for me, and they really help me be a better producer. And also, when we're on the producing and DJ side of things as well, man, I also noticed that you have your own Spotify playlist stuff available, man. And I, and I, I do want to say, man, first and foremost, I noticed you're having some issues with some individuals. I got to say, man, my my, my apologies that you had, you had to deal with deal with crap like that, man. I, I deal with some of the same stuff, unfortunately, being in the music industry. But for the people that are actually interested and come with, you know, come money ready, how can they be a part of your Spotify playlist? Because by the looks of that, man, it seems like a phenomenal deal. Yeah, the the whole thing with, with my actual personal playlist is just something that, you know, I put together just a bunch of my beats and stuff like that. Um, as far as, you know, uh, the promotion service that I did, I'm actually having to suspend that right now because of all the things that are going on with Spotify. Um, you know, I usually don't get into a lot of because to be perfectly honest, I don't know the whole deal about what's going on with Spotify. They yank down a bunch of songs claiming this and that and you know, a lot of things are coming up, so nobody really knows what's going on. So just in the meantime, so a lot of other things, you know, uh, so a lot of my clients, you know, won't have to go through any further drama. You know, I just, you know, stop the whole thing for now until everybody can find out the facts. Because, I, you know, personally, you know, being in the industry, I, I just have a feeling that there's a lot more that meets the eye with this thing. And within the coming months, it's probably going to come out. So... You know, it, it is it is what it is. You know, it's a part of the music business and, you know, these things happen. And I got to say as well, I hope with this Spotify thing as well, I really do hope that, you know, the truth comes out. Because I got to say, I really do think, you know what I mean? And it's obvious that Spotify really skims off the top, man. They give you like less than pennies per stream, which is, in my personal opinion, is just absolute like dumpster juice, man. Like they should be paying what, what the artists deserve. It really, it, you know, they, they really should, but a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, all the major labels have a stake in Spotify, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're all in bed together, so, and, you know, the music industry in general has never really been for the artist, so, you know, this is just another case of that going down, and, you know, it's not just Spotify, it's a lot of the streamer platforms, it's a lot of the sites and blogs, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, terrestrial radio, it's just, you know, things that artists have to fight through if they want to be in the business. So, you know, it's, it's we just have to deal with it. And hopefully something, hopefully in our lifetime, something better comes along, you know. But if not for us, at least for the for the next generation of artists that are, that are coming through. And also in 2011, you were actually inducted into the Wu-Tang, sorry, Wu-Tang Worldwide DJ Coalition. I was wondering, can you tell us a bit more about that? And of course, like, what, what is it like actually working with the Wu-Tang Clan? Um, the, the DJ coalition was started by RZA, you know, saying just as a way to, you know, say keep the DJs relevant, you know, um, who would they have a, you know, phenomenal DJ, you know, in, 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 in mathematics and, you know, they just want to extend, uh, you know, just the love of the DJ and love of the craft, you know, I unfortunately never got to work with, you know, uh, any of the clan members directly, you know, um, but being a part of the coalition has is, is has always been good, you know. Just number one for that for that name recognition, and it helps a lot of other up and coming DJs, you know, find themselves as DJs and actually transition on to uh, you know other areas. Like because of the coalition, you know, what I'm saying I was able to hook in with a lot of the affiliate groups, like you know GGO, which is uh, overseen by Hell Rizza. Uh, 144,000 Chosen Few, which is overseen by Judah Priest, Buddha Monk, Zoo Bullies, you know, I have all these connections thanks to the to the DJ Coalition. So, you know, that in itself is, is, is a blessing. And also as well, man, with the, DJ, with the DJ Coalition, man, like, how many members actually is there? Because I know there's, like, t thousands upon thousands worldwide, but, like, how many members actually, like, do you think there is in the Worldwide uh, Coalition? Um, at least a couple of hundred, you know, because um, they're, 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 all, they're all encompassing, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't really turn down, you know, a lot of people. Of course, you know, some people fall out through the different reasons and, you know, they move on. And, you know, that's, that's basically, 
uh, what the coalition is about. You know, saying it's one big brotherhood, and you know they just want you to develop and and, and find your own path after a while. You know, there you know uh, guys like DJ Flipside, who was you know instrumental. DJ Wiz, you know Grand Body P. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, are really phenomenal DJs, and they wound up, you know, what I'm saying heading up other things, you know, and, and, and representing the flag with, with with dignity. And you know, that's that's the hope for everybody in the coalition that you know they get to you know find themselves and in, 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 in keep the whole DJ thing alive and just do what they love. And also as well, I noticed that you were actually featured in the Wu Tang Rocks the World uh, compilation series. I was wondering. Uh, what was it like working on working on that series? And of course, where can our listeners snag themselves some copies of the entire series if if they're not already you know up on game with, pertaining to that like you know comp- compilation series? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Wu Tang rocks the world and Wu Files, and you know a lot of these great compilations are, are overseen and spearheaded by DJ Flipside, wonderful you know DJ producer. Uh, you know he organizer he, he he's the one that's responsible for a lot of this stuff so you know you can go to dj Flipside's Bandcamp and you know snag all of these i also have you know a, a lot of them that i'm featured on on my website uh bigbossbeats.com and uh yeah it, it's always phenomenal you know when uh when Flipside calls me it's like hey these ai you know we need we need something you know i send it over and you know, it's it's always an honor and a privilege and a blessing to be a part of of you know this this whole movement. You know, that's that's what a lot of people you know don't realize. I I feel totally blessed to be a part of all of this. And also, as well, man, uh, you were you were actually the owner of Big Boss Records and Big Boss Entertainment. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about those companies and what services do you actually provide to the general public? Yeah. So Big Boss Entertainment was uh, is my uh, promotion company. You know, uh, I just do a lot of you know website and blog posts and social media promo. We run paid ad campaigns for clients and, and things of that nature. And Big Boss Records was actually my record label. Um, it's basically when once I start once I moved from producer to artist and started putting out beat tapes and things like that, I just felt it was better for me to have my own label to put things out on. This way I can control more of the business side of what I'm doing. You know, and this is something that I advise all artists to do is like learn the business and just really, you know, get into ownership and control of your own uh, content because we see it all the time. You know, this person's doing because they, uh, they, you know, their masters got sold out from under them, or they don't control this, or they don't control that. So, you know, I just try to control as as much as I possibly can. And you know, it, a lot of people get upset because you know I didn't, you know, make this label to you know sign artists and and, and, and you know blow people up. I just did it for just my own, you know, uh, uh, peace of mind. <laughs> And also in October 2020, yourself and yourself and Kep C released the album uh, Beat Lessons. I was wondering if you can tell us how did yourself and Kep C get connected, and of course, where can our listeners snag themselves a copy if they haven't already do- done so? Okay, um, Kep C is basically you know a, a real phenomenal MC. I met him out here in uh, in Washington. He recently moved back to uh, Pittsburgh, where he's orig- where he's from. He's originally from Virginia, actually, but, you know, a lot of his time was spent in Pittsburgh. Um, I met him out here, and he, you know, phenomenal MC, who was also a producer, and he was actually my mentor when it came to producing. He was actually the one that actually got me into producing, because, you know, when I, when I decided to retire from DJing, I really didn't know what I was going to do. And he was like, well, you know, maybe you should, you know, get into producing, and at the time, I really didn't feel like, number one, that I would be good enough to be a producer. You know, I, I, I didn't want to get into it, you know, as some type of trendy stuff. You know, I, I, if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it right. And I just didn't feel that I can do that. And Kep C was the one that gave me that push. They're like, listen, dog, I believe in you. I think you should do it. And so, you know, he... Um, you know, when, when, when I got my first beat machine, he, you know, sat me down, taught me how to use it, and, you know, really mentored me a lot. So to be able to actually do a project with him um, was was a blessing, you know, to 
be able to do a project with my mentor, it, it was a wonderful thing. And, um, you know, you can catch it on, you know, Pepsi Beats, his band camp is on my band camp. It's on, you know, almost all, all streaming platforms. You know, it's also on my website. So, yeah. And I have to ask you, uh, Iceman, what is next for you? Is there anything I missed during this interview? Anything else you still want to talk about and promote with stuff you hear live on the Canadian airwaves? <clears throat> um, you know what, what? What's next for me is just you know I'm I'm just gonna keep you know uh, producing you know try to try to get some good beats out get some good music out you know um, and just you know try to keep you know a, a, a positive outlook and positive energy you know this last year has been really rough for a lot of people so you know I I just want to extend you know uh, gratitude for even being here and just you know good wishes and good vibes for everybody to have a very you know, uh, productive and, and wonderful 2021, you included. So, you know, um, yeah, I'm not really, you know, working on it. I'm just, you know, keep tuned, you know, uh, DJ underscore Iceman underscore 73 on Instagram or, you know, Robert Anderson, my personal Facebook page, DJ Iceman, Big Boss Beats, my, um, my, uh, my fan page on Facebook, www.bigbossbeats with a Z, Dot com. That's my website. You can go there, listen to my music, watch videos, uh, you know, get a little merch or whatever. And, um, you know, just, you know, just, just keep a lookout, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully there's some more, you know, wonderful work with uh, DJ Flipside, you know, Wu Files, um, you know, Wu Tang Rocks the World's projects. You know, I got projects with all my, uh, with all my brothers, you know, shout out to Zoo Bullies, shout out to GTO, Team OBEZ. Dirty Klansmen, 144,000 Chosen Few, you know, these are all, you know, affiliate woo groups that I'm blessed to be a part of, you know, they welcomed me in, these are all my brothers, you know, shout out to, you know, Judah Priest, Buddha Monk, Hell Rizza, uh, Cuban Pete, Smooth Mass Beats, you know, uh, Menace OBEZ, you know, all these guys are just, you know, wonderful guys to be around, you know, I learn a lot from them. And, you know, basically my last message is just stay positive, you know, uh, try to get as much knowledge as you can about the business and everything that's going on, you know, um, support the DJ, support your producers, support radio, you know, especially in this day and age where, you know, a lot of us are shut in. A lot of people forget about terrestrial and, and internet radio, you know, um, you know, you guys provide such an outlet for not only breaking artists, but keeping us up to date on everything that's going on, you know, musically and otherwise. And, you know, now more than ever, you guys need our support, just like, you know, saying we need your support. You know, so for all y'all radio people out there, you know, salute to y'all. And I got to say as well, pertaining to the radio thing you just brought up, man, one thing that, one thing that bothers me about being in the radio industry is, a lot of individuals automatically assume you're just a podcast. And it's sad that, like, you know what I mean? Just because someone does an interview or something, they they think your platform is just a two-hour podcast. You know what I mean? It's like, it's almost like podcasts are taking yeah. over the radio realm of things. Yeah, but, you know what I'm saying? I mean, just like, you know, outlets like yours, there's still all good outlets out there for music, you know. You just have to wade through a lot of the bullshit to, to, to find the gold. But, you know, once you find it, you know what I'm saying, lock it in and, and, and keep, you know, keep abreast of it. I most definitely agree, man. That's that, that's, that's, that's that's some real shit right there. <laughs> but DJ Iceman, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give shoutouts to whomever they want to give shoutouts to. And of course, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything DJ Iceman if they're not already doing so. Yeah, um, like I said, shout out to all my Wu brethren, you know, 144,000 The Chosen Few, you know, Judah Priest, Zoo Bullies, Buddha Monk, Dirty Klansman, Dungeon Master, you know, DGO Hell Rizza, you know, Team OBEZ, you know, with, with, with my man Menace, you know, uh, Wu-Tang Worldwide DJ Coalition, you know, Filthy Fingers United, you know, shout out to everybody who supports me, shout out to... You know, Outlaw Radio. It's just, there's just so many people who I, you know, want to thank. You know, my wife, my kids, and um, basically, you know, just shout out to everybody. Shout out to hip hop in general. 
you know, uh, and like I said, where to find me, DJ underscore Iceman underscore 73 on Instagram, uh, Robert Anderson with DJ Iceman, Big Boss Beats on um, Facebook, Big Boss Beats with a Z.com is my website. And um, yeah, man, that's it. <laughs> you know, shout out to the whole world. Thank you all very much. And once again, thank you, DJ Immortal, for having me. It's been an honor and a privilege. You know, shout out to you and all your Canadian fans. And, and shout out to Canada. <laughs> I got to say, man, you are most certainly welcome. And I'm going to be honest, I have like a... I have a weak spot for the for the Wu-Tang Clan, man. I'm a huge fan, so you know what I mean? It was an honor to have you yeah, on we... here, man, because you're such an amazing, talented DJ, bro, that it would be a crime if I didn't reach out to you and offer you a slot on my radio station. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been a fan ever since they came out, and you know what I'm saying? Like I said, even even a small part that I play and being a part of this movement is, is a dream come true. It's a blessing, so, you know, I, I appreciate it. But I gotta say, DJ Ice, man, I hope you have a wonderful night, man. I hope, uh, you, you know, you have a wonderful 2021. And most definitely, man, try to stay try to stay safe out there all the way out in Washington. Same same to you, man. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, you, you get some relief from that snowstorm out there. Stay safe, stay warm, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you and the family are good. And, you know what I'm saying, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to holler. Hey, man, same goes for you. Need any radio services, hit me up. I got you. All right, man. Thank you. You're most certainly welcome. Have yourself a wonderful night. You too.